Thank you for that answer. No more questions about Matt. Yeah. <laughs> and you oh, answered yeah. what was going to be the next question, so we'll go on to the next one, which is That's from like, Sean. I answered like 15 questions. Michael Steele is a student. He says, how do you reconcile the press's responsibility in combating misleading or inaccurate information with providing airtime to public figures who routinely lie or mislead their audiences? And there were many questions along that line. So it's I think a, real, a lot of people it's a really good, It's a good question, uh, and one that we wrestle with all the time, because... Two thirds of the House Republican conference voted to undermine the elections, right? I mean, so do you never have any of them on? What about, the, what about if, do you have them on if they're discussing some other issue? It is an issue that uh, I have wrestled with publicly, uh, much to uh, CNN PR's chagrin. Um, so shortly after, the election uh, of 2020 and the efforts to undermine the election. <clears throat> I was doing a, a podcast interview with Kara Swisher, uh, and I said something along the lines of, like, we should be at least, ha people in the media should be having a conversation about whether or not we even book election liars, because if they're willing to lie about the election, what else are they willing to lie about? Um, and I thought this would be like a moment in journalism we're like, you know, it would cause a great conversation. And instead, like, I turned around and was like, let's see in Animal House where, like, Belushi's like, all right, who's with me? Uh, literally nobody <laughs> following him. Um, so uh, anyway, I have had election liars on, and I have had them on sparingly, and I've had them on to not talk about that. I've had them on when I have had a need to talk about them, talk with them specifically about something that I had to talk with them about. For instance, <clears throat> the Sunday before Matt Gates uh, single-handedly caused us to not have a Speaker of the House for a month, uh, I had him on my show. And I wasn't gonna ask him about the election. Um, he was gonna make news and I had him on, uh, and you know, it's not like it's my proudest moment, <laughs> but I, it was an, it was newsy. Uh, he was going to make news. It was very relevant to what was about to happen, and I don't have a problem with it. Um, you know. It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a dilemma because this is the party that controls the House of Representatives, and two-thirds of them voted to undermine the election. Um, and I take it quite personally because uh, I'm from Pennsylvania, and so they literally voted to not count the votes of my mom and dad. Um, and so that pisses me off. And it's based on lies. It's based on complete nonsense. So it is something that I struggle with every time we book one of these folks. Um, and all I can tell you is I wrestle with it every time, and I try to book them sparingly, and, but I can't, avoid, I can't avoid them altogether because they keep getting elected. <laughs> And I live in the United States, and I cover the United States Congress. Yeah. But I try to avoid con conversing with them about subjects that I know they will lie. That's the best I can do. You, you, you people keep electing them. <laughs> and well, I'm that... talking about you in this room specifically. 